Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Cooper, known as the Channel Guy Trader, and I am reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading Satellite Office down in sunny South Florida. Today's date is Tuesday, September the 11th, 2012, and here is today's After the Bell Market Summary. I want to first start by taking a look to see how the indices closed here. The Dow Jones closed up 69 points, and NASDAQ closed up half a point and the S&P 500 closed up four and a half points. We take a look to see how the stocks closed today on the market as far as breadth goes. We had 4,072 stocks advancing. We had 2,116 stocks declining on the NYC, NASDAQ and the AMEX and the we had 418 stocks making new highs and 67 stocks making new lows on the NYC, NASDAQ and AMEX. So pretty uh, bullish undertone in the market today even though we had the uh, NASDAQ and the S&P S&P 500 popped up and faded, you know, during the mid part of the day, along with the Russell, of course, here. But I would say the bulls held their ground pretty steady today. A lot of the banks broke out higher right out the uh, gate there. That was pretty, pretty good as well. Energy stocks were in tune today. The transport stocks were getting their groove on today. So a lot of good stuff going out there, and just goes to bode well. While I'm going to show you guys why. We may not get that back test all the way down there towards 1410 from the break of the ES from this little nice little range we have. Something that I see forming right now, and that's why I told you guys we, we're going to need some more time to see what what could be taking place right here. And this is what I so far I have on my chart is in my channels in my proprietary channel analysis here is that we have you know a nice little downward channel taking shape off the breakout that came from this little horizontal price range. Right? Notice how we're having key resistance at this key trend line right here. All right, and once we break above that trend line, that's going to give a buy signal. So we're going to be having that trend line on watch. The more we consolidate between these two channels, you can even see they shook some people out below this channel today. All right, as this is the candlestick for tomorrow, Wednesday session. In any case here, you can see how they shook some people out to the downside, and we're having trouble at the resistance. So the fact that we had this trend line act as resistance for three days in a row now, you know, brings it of importance to me here. So therefore, I will be watching it going forward. And so far, it looks like we're setting up, just consolidating right now, setting up a bull flag that should push us up towards, uh, up here towards 14.55 or so. All right, if that plays out, as we do have all the moving averages rising up right now, and after breaking out this four-day consolidation, I mean, after breaking out this four-week consolidation chop action we had on this ES, and buyers being more convinced now, we just need prices to digest a little bit while the market flags out a bit here, and uh, you know, digest some of this move some of this up move we had coming to the market last week. So in any case, ES is looking pretty good. Levels to watch on the ES for tomorrow, 14. Today's opening price here, 14.25. Then around this 14.23 area where we have this moving average from the 8 EMA and 8 SMA on the daily. Top side, we need to watch this 14.37.52 area. 14.33 remains the key level to watch as well. As uh, we highlighted that level going into today's session, and we were able to trade the market pretty well using that level as a key inflection point throughout the session. And you could take a look at our midday update, market midday midday market update, excuse me, that's on the YouTube channel, My Wall Street TV, and see how we were able to analyze the market intraday. So what else do we have going here, going on here? Well, the queues, I highlighted the fact yesterday how the queues broke out, and that kind of breakout in the queues, you know, I would have liked to see the queues hold up at least 50% of Thursday and Friday's action from last week. However, they gave that back, and right? you can see, you can now see we're trading below Thursday's action there. So this looks like it could be a possible bull trap, like I stated yesterday, all right? And as long as we can hold below 68.75, and we start getting some selling pressure, the people that are stuck, with the queues up here, they're going to start feeling some pain. They're going to want to dump. The people that see that the queues are getting weak, they're going to want to sell, and that's when we're going to get that selling pressure. All right, if we get back above 68, 70, 75, then we could, you know, just be chopping around here and then start forming a range between 68, 43 or so and 69, 50. So we need some more, uh, you know, we need some more trading days here to get a little bit more details, a little bit more clues of what we can expect to happen right here in the queues. If we do get some selling, we'll expect the 67, 37 level to act as some decent support. All right, and then as far as the top side goes, a trigger over today's highs around 68.82 could bring the queues back up towards 69.25. Taking a look at the IWM, IWM is showing some decent intraday strength compared to the other indices. All right, showing some decent intraday strength compared to the other indices. Today it did. Today it did attempt to break. Today it did try to attempt to break past the previous day's highs. Came right back in and claimed came 10 cents away from making new 52-week highs. So. We need this Russell make new 52-week highs, catch up with the other indices, show some, you know, continue to show some support, 
And I think it will do that once it consolidates a little bit more from this nice little breakout that it re had from this, uh, that really got started once it broke this little downward bullish channel that we have been analyzing. So looking for a move over 85, eight, sorry, 84.66 on the IWM will make it new 52-week highs. A lot of interesting things going on there. Now, I want to take a look at the SPY because I forgot, you know, a lot of you guys look at the SPY as well. And I should have looked at this after the ES. I got to keep on remembering to bring this in my routine for you guys here, which won't be a problem going forward. In any case, the SPY consolidating up here just like the ES, obviously, and looking for some nice little high base consolidation flag pattern. Maybe wait for some of these moving averages down here to catch up a little bit here while we consolidate some more. And that's good. The more we consolidate, the more the moving averages catch up, the more we can let some of these stocks digest again and uh, give us some better entries. Now, the e, the SPY could pull back if we were to get some selling pressure. And if it does, I would be keeping a close eye on the 142.58 level, which lines up with the prior resistance broke out right here. So now it should act as support on the right side of the breakout. That's what we're looking for. We break below 142.58, then we'll be using candlestick. The uh, candlestick, we'll be using Thursday's lows, this candlestick at a low right here, around uh, 141.75 as the next pivotal level. So a lot of interesting things going on in the SPY. Top side resistance on the SPY is 144.46. You can see we're still at the top of this channel. So we very could well, you know, if they have some bullish action from the Fed news and the Germany news that we're expecting tomorrow from the, actually the uh, Germany constitutional court ruling on the ESM, you know, we'll see what happens. And we could get a pop-up to this trend line and test that. We'll see. A lot of interesting things going on. Now, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is going to bounce right at the bottom of this channel here. All right, got a bounce. Actually, got a bounce yesterday, and then today they sold it right off and go for the prior day's action, and still closing below Friday, last Friday's low. So this is pretty interesting. A lot of selling pressure going on in the dollar. A lot of selling pressure going on in the dollar. And one thing that I'm gonna show you guys here on the dollar and euro that's very important is if the dollar breaks this little downward trend line, that's actually that's trying to act as support right now from this little downward channel. I mean. We should be uh, getting a nice little selling pressure down towards 78, 79, 79 area, and that we're going to see the market get a bounce there. Now, get a, get a continue to move higher. That's what I'm looking for. That's uh, that's something I'm paying close attention to to use that as a gauge of what this market wants to do. Along with the euro dollar, which I said to you guys, I showed you guys some of my proprietary channel analysis on the euro dollar. Say the fact that you know, for the past, you know, since back here in November, we've been having trouble breaking past this key trend line right here. This little red shaded area, you guys can see that. I'm just marking it with the arrows. Now, notice today we got a little bit of character. We got a little bit of change of characteristics here, right? We have the ES. We have the sorry. We have the euro dollar actually breaking above that trend line and closing, getting our first close of that little shaded downward channel area that we've been holding below since back here in November. Okay, and obviously we're above this 128 level. So, you know, tomorrow. If they were to come out with something something favorable for the euro, and you know everybody starts buying the euro, we're going to see the dollar sell off. We're going to see the euro break out. Euro should get a nice push higher again for the fact that we're finally above that level there. Some stops, probably some stops placed up here, and uh, it could get very interesting. Level to watch on this euro is going to be around the 130 level, 130.57 as the next target. If we continue trending higher. Okay, now take a look at the volatility index. VIX, VIX is still getting a nice bounce here. I did state the fact that, you know, I was expecting maybe the volatility index to come down, back down here and test the bottom of the channel. As you can see here, that's what we've been doing, just testing the trading inside the channel. And then for the fact that it did hold that 14 level and made a higher low off the lows from back here on August 20th, that, that is, you know, a higher low. And there could be some people bidding the VIX now because obviously if they, were, if they weren't bidding for the VIX, we would have been down here near the bottom of the channel or at least at, at least drifting our way back down towards that bottom of the channel to tag it like we've been doing since back here in June. So a lot of interesting things taking place between the euro, the dollar, the volatility index. All right, Apple's starting to show some weakness even, you know, and that's causing some pressure on the Qs. Uh, the semiconductor showing some weakness, you know, which is a good good measure of growth for the economy, for, you know, the tech sector is the semis and semis intel is pretty weak there you see it's focused on the downward channel i'm expecting intel to hit the bottom of this channel down here around 22 that channel comes from this inflection point this inflection point and this inflection point if you guys were wondering and uh s and dk let me see what this thing did today s and dk is as maybe one of the better looking semiconductors let me take a look at qcom qcom's more involved with the apple product along with the crus and crus pulling back there a little bit so a lot of interesting things going on in that sector intel you know causing some selling pressure along with Apple. 
Let's take a look at some of the big boys. Google, uh, Amazon, Google pulled back a little. Amazon pulled back a bit today. IBM showing some great strength, guys, in the market. We've been tracking this IBM stock. And now if you take a look at IBM, looks like a little inverse head and shoulders that's taking place in IWM. I would definitely keep an eye on that. One thing you could do is draw your trend line right here. And this thing's probably just getting started. You know what? It is up four days in a row now, so I would wait for maybe some type of consolidation or pullback. But if this thing wants to get rocking, it is at this key trend line from the inverse head and shoulders pattern that you know I'm expecting to play out here and maybe give us the ride back up to the highs up here, especially if we see that flag played out play out on the uh, SPY. Going to be keeping a close eye on some of these agriculture stocks. MON consolidating below 90, still holding above this $89 hole figure here out of this little range. Okay, the more it consolidates between 89 above, sorry, the more it consolidates above 89 and between 90, could give us a nice little cons consolidation down this hourly time frame, this dollar range to get a nice little continue to move higher. Um, let's see here, CF not looking all that great. AGU, AGU looks a little bit interesting. These stocks need a little bit more time to set up here, though. AGU is a stock that if it doesn't have any volume that day, you try to trade it, it could rip your face off. But uh, Goldman Sachs, let's take a look at some of these banks real quick. Goldman Sachs still chugging along, looking strong. If the stock continues to go high with no pullback, the next level you want to watch is around the 120, 36 level. Let's take a look at J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan looking very healthy as well. And BAC. BAC looking pretty strong as well. One thing that I have here, I have some channels on the BKX, which is the banking index as well. Let me take off my studies here. And you can see here, on the uh, banking index, we were trading inside this little range right here. All right, we traded in this range. We broke down, rallied up. Back test was not able to break above the range right here. They sold it off. But notice how we right here on this side, under my little pink channel resistance zone, red, pink, whatever you want to call it. You know, we have our nice little, we have our nice little tight consolidation range that broke out. All right, and that was giving us a clue that that could happen because we were consolidating right inside this channel, right below that other key channel that I have marked. All right, this is some of my proprietary channel analysis stuff, guys, and I share this with people um, as they come up and you know in the chat room when we see this type of pattern set up on these daily time frames and some of the stuff that I have channels for. In any case, there, you know, as long as we get BKX could hold above 48.76, you could see this BKX still continue to trend higher and make people chase these financials. So I'm using that area as an inflection point. Um, and that's one another thing that I'm watching there. And what else did I want? To, the casinos were strong today. Let's take a look at Win W Y N N. Nice engulfing candle on Win from the previous days, from yesterday's action here. All right, and definitely going to be keeping an eye on this stock. We could maybe want be wanting to make a move towards the 111 area. If you take a look at the 60-minute chart, 60-minute chart. If the 60-minute chart could start holding holding above 105. We could get some nice action. Notice how we have the moving averages on the 60-minute, the faster time frame right here, the 8 EMA and 8 SMA, trending pretty hard uh, right underneath the price action, pretty close to it. And this is kind of like a little nice little flag here that's playing out on the 60 with a big breakout bar, tight range that took place today. All right, and now we're going to be looking for that break above this level or call it just 105 and holding above it. That's about it, guys. I'll have some more ideas, obviously, in the morning when we get the pre-market fresh news from stocks um, from the pre-market action. And any overnight uh, important news, PRs that come out from any of these stocks. So we'll see. Hope you guys had a great trading day today. We had a couple stocks that made us some decent coin. You guys can find that in our midday market update where we go, where I try to go over most of the trades that we were trading in the chat room. If you haven't been to the website, wallstreettrading.com, you want to go there, check it out. Fill out the form on the right hand side for the 14 day free trial to My Wall Street TV. And um, you have act, you'll send, get. You'll get sent back an email that gives you the information to access the chat room. So hope you guys had a great day today, and I'll catch you guys manana. Have a good night, folks.